Hi, thank you for watching part two of my two-part series on glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. Now, as it was pointed out to me by a viewer that watched the glycolysis video, I don't actually cover any of the mechanisms or the structure of any of the molecules involved, but in an upcoming video, I, I plan to do that. Part of the reason is the time constraint. You're limited to 10 minutes or 100 megabytes, whichever comes first. And um, obviously I wouldn't have enough time. My last video came up to eight and a half minutes and I had to refilm this one because it went to like 11 and a half. So without further ado, here's my marker board and I will go step by step or the steps of glycolysis, or gluconeogenesis with you and discuss every enzyme involved in the reaction. Now, if you remember last time, about halfway through, we put a two X to signify that we had two three carbon molecules from the original six carbon molecule of glucose. This time we're going to start off with two three carbon molecules of pyruvate. Now it's important to note that pyruvate can also be used as a precursor for some amino acids as well as the next uh, product that we get when we add pyruvate carboxylase. Here, and we're also going to have, we're going to have an ATP to an ADP. And we're going to have a um, carboxylic group, so. And that's going to go to inorganic phosphate. And then we get oxaloacetate. Oxalo, uh, oxalate. All right, so oxaloacetate can also be used as a precursor. Sorry, I'm spelling this wrong. Acetate. As a pre precursor for some amino acids. Um, followed by that, there's a reversible reaction here with py phosphophenylpyruvate carboxylkinase. And as you would imagine, kinase is going to involve a phosphate. We're actually going to use a GTP, guanine triphosphate. It's going to go to GDP plus CO2. From there, we're going to get phosphophenylpyruvate. And from there, we're going to use enolase. Now, if you remember last time when we used enolase, we lost a water. This time, we're going to put a water into the reaction here. So the water's being added. Uh, then we have 2-phosphoglycerate. And if you remember last time, we used a mutase to move the uh, phosphate group from carbon 3 to carbon 2. This time we're going to use uh, phosphoglycerate mutase to move it back from carbon 2 to carbon 3. Mutase. And let me erase the board so we have space. Like I said, the mutase, just like before, is going to move the phosphate group to the next carbon. So we'll have three phosphoglycerate. And from three phosphoglycerate, we're going to use phosphoglycerate kinase, and we're going to use an ATP. So add adenine triphosphate to adenine diphosphate. From there, we're going to get 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. I think that looks familiar from last time. And from there, we're going to use glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate dehydrogenase. So if 
you notice a lot of the enzymes that we're using here are not the same as the, what we did before. It's not the exact reciprocal of glycolysis. We're also going to have, remember before we had NAD plus and an inorganic phosphate going to NADH. This time we're going to have NADH going to NAD plus and an inorganic phosphate. From there, we're going to have glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And we're going to actually close the brackets from that 2, because with this next step, the aldolase we're going to build the 6-carbon molecule again. Let me erase this. Uh, it's not confusing. Again, I apologize for any bad handwriting that I have. Sometimes my students, the school, complain about it as well. But uh, it's also important to note, if aldolase is not used in this step, if instead a triose phosphate isomerase is used, you'll have a dehydroxyacetone phosphate which is the precursor to glycerol that you can use. So this pathway, if it doesn't happen to go all the way through and to completion, there's different side steps where the, the pathway can take another branch off. So like I said in the beginning, uh, oxaloacetate and pyruvate are precursors to amino acids. Well, um, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate can be used as a precursor for glycerol. So the autolase will take it to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Uh, it looks familiar. That was in glycolysis. Uh, let me move to the top. So fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is exposed to fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase. From there, we're going to actually, this is a, a one way. We're actually going to have water going in and an inorganic phosphate coming out. This is a phosphatase, it's taking the phosphate away. And we're going to get fructose 6 phosphate. Which should look familiar again. And then we're going to go to phosphoglucose isomerase, which is reversible. And from there, we're going to have glucose 6-phosphate, like we had in the glycolysis. So we're almost there. We need to take that phosphate group off with a glucose 6-phosphatase. As you can see, if you want to go into the whole brevity thing, you'd say G6P fatase. I don't know how you would abbreviate it, but if you're studying alone at home, it's also going to have a water. You need the water for the phosphatase, and it's going to take the inorganic phosphate off. And you're left with your product, glucose. So, apologize if you couldn't see this side of the board. Uh, join me next time, and we'll be doing all of the structures for these. Maybe not very next time. I actually want to do a special on iron protoporphyrin 9 and the various coordinate positions. I've always been interested in that. So thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.